she beaming, I be booming down that block. Down that block. Everywhere you go, you know they know I'm hot. What's up? What's going on, my good people? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you all are doing well. If this is your first time here, I want to welcome you. Pull up a seat. Hope you enjoyed the content. And before we get into this video, I want to ask that you like, comment, share, subscribe. Go ahead and tap that bell while you're at it so you're notified anytime I drop a brand new video, go live or schedule a premiere. All right, y'all. So I'm back with another mukbang and I'm keeping things very simple. I got some pan seared chicken and some broccoli. That's it. Very simple. It's lunchtime, and I figured I would come have lunch with y'all. Um, so let's get to it. One thing I'm going to try today is G. Hughes sugar-free Polynesian sauce. I'm going to try this. I want to dip my chicken in this. I took the wrapper off before I got on camera, but I have not tried this yet. So I hope it's good. I really want it to be good. Mm. Oh, yeah, it's good. That is good. I'm going to dip my chicken in it. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, that's good. Not only do I want to keep things simple, <clears throat> I also really wanted to eat with my hands today. I got a fork off to the side, but I don't feel like using it. Mm-hmm. This is so simple. But so satisfying. So, I know one of the biggest things in the new year is like health, wellness, working out, fitness, all that stuff. And that's just always something that's on my list. Just as somebody who's struggled with weight, have had an eating disorder, all of the things, that's just always something I'm working on constantly. You know, trying to figure out ways to improve my relationship with food. Like, what can I learn? What can I do different? How can I be better? Right? And one of the things I wanted to do is that I'm still focused on like eating at home at not a hundred percent. I do want to eat at home as much as I can. Um, but then like when you eat at home, like food can get boring sometimes. Right. Or you're like, damn, this is the third day it is. I don't really want that. So one of the things I've been trying to do is like get sauces, like dipping sauces. So that's why I bought this particular sauce, the Polynesian sauce. And I got a sugar free sauce uh, because I also want to be mindful of the sugar. So on this, this is only 10 calories for two tablespoons. Um, and like I said, it has no sugar in it. So this is something I want to add into the rotation when you're just trying to spice things up a little bit, different types of like hot sauces and stuff like that too. So I've been doing that. And then another thing I did y'all, I bought me a food scale. I bought me a food scale. So this was a scale that I bought that we've been using. And so I'm eating five ounces of protein, five ounces of chicken. And you know, it really does like I don't okay I wanted to say that it's so easy to think that you're having one serving of something and it really end up being two servings or three servings and that's really not your intention this full scale has really shown me a lot in terms of me understanding how many calories I'm eating how many ounces of protein I have just everything like it's really been 
eye-opening. It has. I've only been using it for, we've only had it like three or four days, but I've been like putting the information in. So on Fitbit, I use the Fitbit Premium and it's just like my fitness pal where you can like scan your food in or add it in. Um, it's just been so eye-opening to be accurate in terms of what I'm actually eating, you know? And one of the things I know I overdo it with is peanut butter. Like with using the food scale, I've been putting in the accurate amount of peanut butter into my smoothies. Without the food scale, I'm probably putting in two servings of peanut butter, which is a significant increase in terms of calories. So a food scale is really important. I'm like, I've been sleeping on the food scale. I have. Like, I can see how it's really beneficial to somebody who's trying to gain weight, lose weight. Um, if you're just trying to watch your sodium intake, like understanding exactly what you're eating makes a big difference. It does. So I've been using the food scale. Like I said, it's only been three or four days, but it's been really, really eye opening. It has. And just overall helpful. You know, for somebody like I said, like myself, who's just had different struggles with food. Mm. So for those of you that work out regularly or just started in the new year, what has been getting you through your workouts? What helps you through your workouts? Maybe it's music. Maybe... It's watching YouTube. So I've been doing home workouts pretty regularly for the last couple months. And so my go-to channels are Body for Days uh, by Jerrica, Juice and Toya, and Grow with Joe. Those are some of my main ones I love. And I love that they have a variety of videos in terms of like length. Now, I will say this, though, that I feel like I automatically just go to like a 30-minute video as, this, as if that's the longest I could work out. Even though I can do, I work out longer than that at the gym, right? But for whatever reason, I always just kind of stop at 30 minutes. And I guess in my mind, it's like, okay, 30 minutes is all I need. And I do think you can get a good workout in 30 minutes. But some days, I need to push myself. So, that's what I've been focusing on is doing longer workouts. And... I felt like I had to switch it up in terms of like what's been getting me through my workouts because usually it's just a podcast or the Beyonce album. I've been saying that her album is what I've been working out to, but I'm like, I need something else for a 50 minute video, for an hour long video. And y'all, movies have been saving my life, Netflix specifically. I told myself that I was going to go through my queue because I feel like I add stuff in my queue and never revisit it again, you know? And my queue has so much stuff in it. So I was like, you know what? Let's go through this Netflix Netflix queue. Watch some movies as we get through these workouts. So that one small change of, number one, believing that I can do the workout. Because I know I can. Like I said, I work out for 45 minutes in the gym. But at home, I just limit myself. So believing that I could do the 45-minute workout and putting on a movie changed everything for me. So like on the big screen, I put the um, YouTube video up. And I mute it, and then I watch a movie on my laptop. And it's just worked wonders for me. Like, I cannot wait to work out today. I got my workout ready to go. Today, I'm actually doing a 40-minute a Jerrica video and a 20-minute Juice and Toya video. So, yeah, I'm going to do some like this walking routine on Jerrica's channel and then strength training for 20 minutes with Juice and Toya. So, I'm excited. I'm looking forward to it. That's why I'm like, let me eat lunch. Let me let... That settled for a little bit, then I can get to my workout a little later. So that's what's been helping too. It's holding myself accountable with the consistency. It's like picking out my workout videos the day before. Like I take my time, go through the channels, see what it is that I want to focus on, find my videos the day before, and the next day I'm ready. I love broccolini, y'all. Like, 
I'm like deeply in love with it right now. So y'all might see a lot of it. You might. I'm about to dip this in it. I don't want that. Mm. One more thing about the food scale. So the last time I went to the doctor and did blood work, it was actually when I got blood work when I went for um, chest pains because of my issues with bulimia. bulimia. I got blood work done. The doctor was telling me that um, she was like, your protein isn't low, but you should focus on it. You know, like, I don't want your protein to get low. And I feel like for a little bit, I tried to, but I wasn't really consistent with like focusing on like increasing my protein, you know? And so I finally did the necessary research I needed to do for my body. And I need to consume between 160 and 212 grams of protein a day. I know damn well, I wasn't eating that much for sure. So I've been focusing on that. You know, and honestly, this food scale has helped me with that, like to make sure that I'm hitting that number. Um, so uh, this is not being sponsored by this company or anything. I'm just, you know, I love to share with y'all. Um, does anybody out there that has any type of dietary restrictions or needs to eat a certain amount of protein? Um, again, if you're trying to gain weight, lose weight, it's helpful just to know exactly what you're eating, you know. Um, and it may be a number, a number of other reasons why you need to understand what you're, you know, um, eating every day and at every meal. So. I just wanted to share that, y'all. This food scale, I can't believe I've never had one. I've talked about it. I think I've even had one in my Amazon cart before, and it went away, and I don't know. So I'm glad that I'm starting the year off with that, and I want to just see how much of a difference it makes for me. Um, I know I won't be able to weigh every single thing that I eat, but, you know, if I understand mostly of what I'm eating, I think that that's what matters in the long run. So... So I'm all done with lunch. It was easy. It was light. I feel satisfied. And I got to use my hands. So I'm happy. Um, but before I get up out of here, I want to share something. Um, so like for the last week, I've been hearing these same words over and over in my head. A safe place to land. A safe place to land. And when it first popped up in my in my head, I didn't think much, much of it. But then I just kept on hearing it over and over and over again, right? And so I sat with it and thought about it. And so now I'm on here. Of course, I want to share with y'all because it might be a message for somebody else that you could take something from it. And in terms of a safe place to land, I think that is something that all of us deeply desire. Some of us may have never experienced it, but I think that it's something that is important also in our journey, you know, as we go through this human experience. And, you know, a safe place to land is really about the environments that we're in, the people that are around us. You know, people play such a huge part of our lives. You know what I'm saying? Like people can literally make us or break us. And, you know, because we love people, we, you know, we, we trust them, we value their opinion, you know, and words, again, can really just either build somebody up or just completely break their spirit. And so many of us have experienced having our spirits broken by people that, that, that are supposed to love us, you know, care about us, that were supposed to protect us. And I just hope that everybody, I pray that every single person that's watching this, that you find a safe place to land this year. And even if you already have one, I hope that you have another one and another one and you continue to build those relationships and environments that make you feel safe. And, you know, feeling safe is so important because that's where you can be vulnerable, be open, able to express yourself. That's a place where you'll be held accountable, where you feel heard, you feel seen, you feel valued, you know, and that is just so fucking important to have. And I just have met so many people and I've also been somebody who didn't have that. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like when I experienced that the most was when I was going through my coming out, like the coming out stage of my life, you know, because me and my parents were at odds and they didn't accept me and my lifestyle at the time. I didn't really feel like I had, I didn't really feel like I had a safe place. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, so much of creating content for me has really been about that is showing up as the person that I needed when I was 18, 19, 20, 20 years old, you know, at the time, you know, me and Steph, we were cousins, obviously we, we knew each other, but we didn't have a relationship. So she wasn't even a person that I could go to at the time. We hadn't had that bond just yet. And, you know, that was a, that was a really a significant moment in my life where I needed a safe place to land. I needed somebody to understand how I felt, you know, um, 
you know, the, the issues I was experiencing in terms of like how to present myself, how I wanted to dress, you know, the struggle of wanting, you know, society forcing me to dress feminine and being ladylike and, and, and that just wasn't who I was, you know, so just so many things I wanted to express and say, and just somebody to give me advice and give me words of encouragement and to tell me that me being who I was, was okay. Like I needed that so bad when I was, I don't know, 18, 19, 20 around that time in my life. So I just pray that all of y'all find so like just find safe places to land that you have people in environments where you can go and ju just show up fully as yourself, um, that you are completely heard, that you're not shut down, that you're not met with judgment um, and that people just value and see you for exactly who you are and that you're constantly reminded that that's ex that's that you being who you are is more than enough because it is. And, you know, for some of us, the safe place to land is starting with yourself. You know, are you a safe place for yourself? And, you know, there were definitely times in my life when I wasn't. I wasn't. Like, I was so insecure. And I wasn't a safe place because of the decisions I was making. I was making horrible decisions. You know what I'm saying? Like, just decisions that could have been so detrimental to my future, um, to where I was going, to, to my purpose. Like, to... It just, I don't know. I'm just making some dumbass decisions. And, yes, it, it is a point of just being young and trying to navigate and figure it out. But... I'm talking about stuff I was doing like in my 30s. You know what I'm saying? And, and and it's not about having it all figured out. I'm just saying that I don't think I was a safe place. I wasn't. I didn't have, I didn't have, like, I wasn't equipped with what it took to like create boundaries and like say no and like stand up for myself and, you know, not pick up the phone when certain people were calling, you know, um, and just holding myself accountable, you know, giving myself things to accomplish and being proud of myself and having a positive mindset. Like I used to talk shit to myself, talk down to myself. You know what I'm saying? And in return, I think it made, it made other people feel comfortable talking shit to me because of the way that I talk to myself. Like I was creating that environment and showing people how to talk to me and, teach, and, and how to um, approach me and how to treat me, right? So I was responsible for a lot of the stuff that happened in my life. And I didn't realize it. You know, I wanted to finger point and blame everybody else for what they were doing. But it's like, Rhonda, look at what you're doing to yourself. Look at how you're talking to yourself. Look at how you're carrying yourself. You know what I'm saying? Walking with your head down. You know, just feeling like you don't have anything to offer. You know what I'm saying? So I hope that you find a safe, that you are a safe place to land within yourself and that you have that in the environments and in the relationships that are in your life. Platonic, romantic, siblings, parents, all of it. Um, but again, all I just hope for everybody out there is that you find that you that you just find different safe places for you to be. You know, like we all I think that's something that's critical to our human experience, you know. Um, because we're going to be hurt. We're going to be down. We're going to be out. We're going to hit, you can hit rock bottom, you know, and it's just like having those safe places to, to like climb out of the darkness. Uh, that shit is like, it's crucial. It is. It's crucial. Like it's, it's just mandatory. And I know so many of us haven't had safe spaces or feel like that it just doesn't exist because the people who were supposed to be that for us when we were young, didn't do that, you know, so we're talking parents, grandparents, aunties, uncles, guardians, whoever you were around most as a child. If you're if you were born into just chaos and confusion and dysfunction and abuse, you may feel like that there's no such thing as a safe space or a safe place in other people. But trust me, there is there is. And we and, you know, we need people to get through this life. We really do. And I'm not even saying you got to have a lot of them. It might be two people that you can lean on hard that are consistent and that are always there for you. You know what I mean? Two, two is better than having 10 people that's fake and phony and, you know, have no interest in your well-being. You get what I'm saying? Like having somebody that just has a genuine interest in you, every part of you and, and the things that you desire to do or where you want to go or become like that, man, I'm telling you, that shit is priceless. It is. So that's really one of my deepest desires for myself is to make sure that I have a safe place to land. And I do. I'm glad that I have it within myself. I'm glad that I have people around and I hope that the number grows. I hope that it does. You know what I'm saying? I want as many people around me that are a safe place as possible. You know, I'm not saying it's everybody that's around me because it's not, you know what I'm saying? It's not everybody. And it, and it may be because for different reasons, maybe things have happened or maybe we're still working towards that. Um, but you know, I want to be a safe place for other people as well. Um, and I want that for y'all too. And I want you to believe that you can have it and that it actually exists because it does. And it really can change your life. It can for sure. It can absolutely like being able to go 
to people that meet you with open arms, no matter what you up against, man, I'm telling you that shit is priceless. So I just want to talk about that because it was just on my mind and in my heart for like the last week. And I'm like, I feel like that is important for me to talk about this because I just really sat with it for like days, you know, and just thinking about how much I changed, how much my circle of friends have changed, how much my mindset has changed. Yeah. Talk to me. Tell me, y'all, like, do you feel like you have a safe place to land within yourself? Do you have safe places that you can go, um, people that you can call uh, when things happen in life? You know, do you have that? And I hope that I see so many comments of you saying that you do. Um, and just, you know, know and understand that it's still a possibility for you, even if you say that you don't, that it's still something that can happen in your life, you know, like don't give up on that being a possibility. So, um, that's it y'all. Thank y'all so much for eating lunch with me. Um, I appreciate y'all. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back very soon. Make the best of the day. Be good to yourself. Peace. I be beaming, I be booming down that block, down that block. Everywhere you go, you know they know I'm